breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. All right, everyone, welcome back to this week's episode of Brainstorming with the Docs. I'm Dr. Colby Condos, my co-host, Dr. Glenn Harrison. How's it going, buddy? Doing good. I'm looking forward to another case studies episode. Yeah, I like these. I think they're fun. They're kind of a break, uh, something mm-hmm. a little different and new, maybe not new, but different for us um, instead of outlining topics and trying to spitball ideas about mm-hmm. you know, what we want to talk about or what we feel is applicable. We sometimes, it's just nice to break down a case and talk about how cases are unique and cool and how you can have some pretty remarkable results sometimes if you're patient enough and you know, you apply the right therapies. So, yeah. Yeah. And looking at it from different viewpoints, I think is important because we are both, we are both looking at it from unique uh, standpoints. So. Absolutely. So if this is your guys' first time watching or listening and you like it and you get value out of it, please hit like, and subscribe and turn on notifications because we're going to continue to roll out new content like this or something similar each and every week. And hopefully we roll out something that's applicable to you. So. Mm -hmm. Today, for our case study, we chose to talk about like chronic pain syndromes, um, which I think are incredibly under-discussed and can be quite debilitating um, when you look at it, when you look at things like fibromyalgia or things like complex regional pain syndrome or reflex sympathetic dystrophy, or even like something like frozen shoulder Mm -hmm. uh, can be really, really debilitating. I think that sometimes if they are unresponsive to care, um, yeah. that patient can be left feeling really, really hopeless. Um, that's right. That's right. Because there, there's no discussion of the mechanism. It's a label. Yeah. It's a label. Like the traditional... diagnosis, adiosis. Yeah. Oh. If, tra- yeah <laughs> if, tra- if traditional therapies are not working, uh, then that's as far as it goes. So then the person suddenly has to um, kind of give up on certain aspects of their life and come to an acceptance of the burden. Um, yeah, ultimately, kind of giving up hope. So. Right. Uh, hopefully our stories can uh, create Give some someone some hope, right? Motivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So to start off, I'm actually going to talk about a case that I had. This is a couple of years ago, actually. Now, um, patient came in, had frozen shoulder and had developed as a secondary complication to the frozen shoulder, um, what had been diagnosed as complex regional pain syndrome. Um, so this patient was incredibly uh, sensitive to any sort of tactile stimulation. So any sort of touch, um, they wore a lot of tank tops because they didn't want any sort of fabric touching their shoulder. It had developed actually secondary to therapy where they actually tried to mobilize the shoulder because it was frozen. Um, all right. It developed some adhesive capsulitis in there. So they actually tried to go in there and physically like force it through some range of motion stuff to reduce the, the, uh, the scarring and stuff like that in the shoulder, which, you know, is appropriate in a lot of cases, but not every case. And after they attempted to mobilize the shoulder, she developed a pain response. Well, they kept attempting to mobilize it, take her through all the range of motion. And because of that, her brain had actually plasticized the pain response. So then it hurt to move it at all. And then it hurt to any sort of like tactile stimulation. And then it started hurting even to something as simple as like a jacket or a t-shirt. So it turned, it, it went from a peripheral, uh, you know, yep. pain, pain stimulus to a central. Yep. So it went from like a peripheral origin to a central origin after yeah. a while, right? Yeah. So this was one where I'm like, holy cow, what am I going to do with this? Okay. Uh-huh. So I ended up doing a really comprehensive neurological examination on her. And this was peripheral nerve exam, a cerebellar exam, you know, basal ganglionic exam, all, all these parts of the exam that really help you break down the nervous system and the different parts of it, for lack of a better word. And what I discovered was there was a lot of issues with not only like her perception of her body, right. But also with the way that her brain was shunting and pushing blood around to these specific parts of her body. Quick question. Um, When you say perception of her body, if someone's listening, they might think it's an opinion. Yeah. So no. So her, the perception, when we talk about perception is like your bot, your brain's awareness of where your body's at in space. Uh-huh. Okay. So how does your brain know where your hand's at in relationship like, to not only yourself, to your mouth, to your mouth if you're feeding yeah, yourself exactly. with your fork. <laughs> That's a good example. Uh-huh. So like how, how are you closed. aware? Yeah. How are you aware of where your body's at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she actually had developed like her patterns or of her, or her lo- ability to localize where her body was at 
was uh-huh. completely skewed. So she had no idea where her right upper extremity was. Um, it was pretty remarkable because I know a lot of you guys are actually listening to this on podcast, but if you're watching on YouTube, she was unable to localize when I would take her friend, her finger, her index finger, and I'd have her eyes closed. If I was to bend it or extend it, she would have no idea. I'd be like, is, is your finger bent or extended? She's like, uh, bent. I'd be like, no, that's extended. Are you sure? Wow. Yeah. Open your eyes. Oh my gosh. Like, wow. so something as simple as that, she was unable to localize where that whole side of her body was. Um, she was running into stuff all the time. And this is something where she's just like, oh, you know, I'm getting a little bit older. We lose our balance. Well, that's mm-hmm. not a normal finding, right? Yeah. That's a, that is not something that should happen like that. Um, and she had actually, her brain had almost started to neglect that side of her body because she didn't want to fire a painter's pain response. So she just wouldn't use it. Uh-huh. Um, so when I started looking at what are some, you know, some exercises or therapies that we can start to apply to this patient to get, to get a change, you know, and you look at it and you go, she can't move her shoulder. So that's uh, out. (laughs) Yeah. We can't just go through and, okay, we're going to do this. Well, you know, I can't just grab your arm and move it because a, that's going to fire a pain response, which is going to further plasticize that pain response. Um, And you can't take it through an active range or passive range of motion at all. So you can't move the shoulder. So what are we going to do? So after doing the exam, I, I actually, came at it where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to actually work on pushing blood to that area, not only to that area of her body, but also to that area of her brain associated with that part of her body. Mm -hmm. Um, So we did a bunch of therapies for that and increase the amount of collateral blood flow to that area, which is basically a way of saying we're going to give it energy without activating it. Right. Mm -hmm. So we did this for a couple of weeks um, and then we moved her up. I've talked about this in the past where I like to layer therapies where I'll apply one thing and it's not necessarily to the direct region or with a specific like pinpoint um, intent, but more so we can push blood to the area or indirectly activate it. So did a bunch of stuff with shunting of blood, pushing blood to appropriate areas. Then we actually remapped that side of her body starting distally, right? We started on her fingers and worked our way slowly, slowly, slowly up to her shoulders so that she was able to localize where that extremity was again. And then I'm going to cut it short because this is getting on and on. But needless to say, after about six months of working with this patient, and this had been something that she'd been all over the place, you know, had been happening for like eight months, 10 months. And within six months, she actually had full range of motion back in her shoulder. And I never did any sort of manipulation to the shoulder. I never did any sort of like actual manual therapy to the shoulder. Um, with the exception of like the last maybe two weeks I was with her, then I would start to apply some manual therapies and we were able to get her to pretty much normal range of motion and completely um, asymptomatic as far as a pain response. No way. Yeah. It's pretty cool. (laughs) It is. Took a long time, right? That's, that's the thing. It wasn't like fast. It wasn't easy. It wasn't super cool, Mm -hmm. but how, how, how how long, how, yeah. How long into care before, uh, she was able to notice that there was some movement without pain. How, how so, many months? I think that the biggest, so her first thing was she was like, I can wear a long sleeve shirt again. That was like the big, oh. that was her first thing where she was like, I think it's getting better because I can wear long sleeve shirts again. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. she was able to move her affected arm with, in order to get dressed without it firing a significant, she's like, it still hurts, but it's not as bad. Um, I would say probably like, Oh, it's been a couple, probably like five months, like four or five months. She was able to start like really get some notable mobility back in her mm-hmm. shoulder. Um, and she would only get pain at the end of the motion. So it wasn't like an aberrant finding. Yeah, right? It wasn't yeah, yeah. like, oh, I started to move it and my shoulder just hurts severely, mm-hmm. like 10 out of 10 pain. It was more like, okay, there are some adhesions in there. And of course it wasn't moving. Right. And now like that's an appropriate response where it should hurt because we're at the end of the range of motion. Yeah. Um, So that was really cool. I, I saw her a couple months ago, um, actually at the grocery store and I was like, how, how's it going? Oh, great. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, my kids are doing great. Yada, yada, yada. No mention of the pain in the shoulder. Um, I actually like, we are always really perceptive as far as like observing people. And I watched her grab a jar off the top shelf with that shoulder. And I was like, all right, cool. You're giving her an exam yeah. in the grocery store. Yeah. It's like <laughs> always observing people. So I thought that was really, really cool. Um, 
I know that when we talked about your cases, you, you approach things really differently than I do Mm -hmm. um, in certain situations, not in all of them, but we were talking about this type of stuff. You were talking about some metabolic work up on a, on a that's that's, that's right. Yeah. There was uh, this uh, younger female, early twenties came in. Um, uh, Her, her mom heard about me from somewhere and, and she was dealing with uh, chronic exhaustion. Um, she was diagnosed with complex regional pain syndrome due to trauma, uh, extremity, you know, years and years and years prior. Uh, I think it was gymnastics or something. Um, so, so that's what it was chalked up to. And uh, it started in her periphery and then it had just started to get, you know, climb around her body. And, and, then, and then it got so bad that she needed implants in her spine because there was so much pain. So TENS units, stim- stimulation units in her spine to offset some of the back pain. So, so she was under pain all the time and she needed these tens units to function. Um, as the pain built over time, there was serious exhaustion. The exhaustion just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And, um, well, you know, she, she did, did her work, uh, you know, well over a decade, <laughs> well over a decade, two decades or almost two decades of, of uh, doctors and strategies and neurologists. And here's the diagnosis, diagnosis, adiosis. Uh, here's the pain medication. Here's your TANS unit. And this is what it is. Um, so, you know, um, there was still some hope there, hope from her mom anyway. Uh, so uh, she reached out and I said, well, it's really up to the, you know, up to the, the person who needs the care. Um, if they're willing to and ready and, and, and to, to, you know, open up that door of hope again. And it took a while. So uh, I'm glad, I'm glad the, the daughter took enough time to think about it, you know, to, to have the courage to try again, right. To look for answers. So when she came in and, and we did, did our exam and, and we found, you know, everything was slow in the brain. There was significant exhaustion. There was significant pain with any kind of range of motion. There was, um, nothing other than those two big fine. Well, I shouldn't say that, you know, uh, palpation, there was no gastric motility, serious constipation. Well, you know, we could talk about the mechanisms of that, but we were able to find some things in her blood that were constantly, um, that, th- th- or I should say in the examination, we were able to find things in the examination that, that were showing problems, irritants, immune irritation, and any significant immune irritation is always going to, you know, uh, create more exhaustion. And uh, well, I left, I left the door open. There's still mosquitoes in Colorado, so my, <laughs> my dog's running in and out. So uh, now he let one of his mosquitoes in. So, so with enough immune irritation, there was there was an, another immune burden, and that's going to steal some energy. So I, I really didn't know how this was all going to play out. The go- the concern wasn't even pain. They weren't even worried about pain anymore. That was just expected but the exhaustion was so bad she wasn't able to work anymore she was how bad the fatigue was because we were just talking about fatigue uh it was so bad that she spent almost 50 percent out of a 24-hour cycle over 50 percent out of 24 24 hour day was sleeping it was she was up more like four to six hours a day that was pretty well all it was maybe eight I don't know. I don't know if there was ever 10. She was in and out of sleep. That's all she can do. Life was falling apart. And we were worried about viruses, right? Because uh, the way the exhaustion came on, didn't find anything like that. But what happened is she was dealing with the fatigue. The pain just got worse and worse and worse. And it started to slow down other systems in the body. Those systems started to become more dysfunctional. And it was like a ton of bricks on this human where everything just got slower and, and, you know, and weaker and more and more fatigued. So so all of the pain disorders causing all the GI problems and everything else. And she was, she had reoccurring sicknesses. She was always episodes of not feeling well because she was immune compromised. So again, I, I didn't, I didn't expect changes in anything. I was like, well, let's, you know, let's piecemeal this one. We'll work on GI. We'll, we'll do what we can from uh, an ener- energy standpoint and, and try to try to facilitate mitochondria with diet and extra. So we went through, we found a bunch of crazy stuff in the lab. So we, we had things to work on. We started to work on these things. Things started to lift. First thing we were able to see is it was slight improvements in, in GI, in, in you know, bowel movements and consistency, not having a, a painful stomach. And then I found out she had a sore stomach since she was like eight. <laughs> wow. Well, 
you know, these are all these things people don't see are connected, but these are like the dominoes that fall one on another and another and another and another. And then there's complex regional pain syndrome. Oh, there's the problem. Nothing can be done. But there was all of the dysfunction that went on for an entire lifetime. As we started to prop up these dominoes per se, you know, digestion improved, energy started to slowly improve, but energy started to improve and then pain started to lift. It was absolutely miraculous on how it turned out, you know, within, um, I think within, within four months, within four months, she was applying for her first job and she, had, she wasn't able to work for years. That's amazing. Yeah. So she's got her life back and she still has complex regional pain syndrome, <laughs> right? Um, and it's still a real thing, but she was able to manage it. So um, uh, you know, there was, there was definitely brain influence, brain work done, but I didn't work directly with the brain with you The you know, yours was all brain, but you didn't work on the shoulder directly. Other than right. yeah. Yeah. So, so pain syndromes, there's mechanisms for it. There's a lot of reasons uh, of, of when I worked, it wasn't just trying to correct the individual dysfunction. There was, there was purpose behind it of, you know, what is robbing energy? And we know anything that's robbing energy is contributing to pain. Um, so she had to have energy to re to, to heal, but her brain was so inflamed. If we think from a neurological standpoint, you could probably comment on this, you know, her brain was so inflamed. There was, there was less stimulation, uh, less uh, stimulus causing an exaggerated response. Yeah. When you look at it, you have a bunch of inflammation in the brain, right? It brings your resting mem membrane potentials mm -hmm. up. So you become less negative. So less stimulus achieves the same action potential mm -hmm. it means like, so we, you know, so how I was working with it was from a metabolic standpoint, doing everything to reduce, uh, you know, kind of systemic uh, global inflammatory processes, which played directly into the brain and had a, you know, had a, had a, had a, the ultimately ended up calming down the pain response. Now, does that mean, and I, I, I wonder this, you know, you, something could happen and you could have a nasty flare where everything lights up again and then you, and then it might have to calm down. You know, you, you, it's not, this could happen again. There could be an episode, but it's an episode. It's not a sentence right? Um, to try to pre prepare her for these things. Um, because literally the vast majority of her life, she was dealing with pain and fatigue. Um, so anyway, there's, there's our, uh, our pain syndromes, <laughs> our case, pain studies. Syndrome. case well, study. Of pain it's always syndrome. interesting when we do these too, because I always take something away from this, right? Mm -hmm. So how can I do my job better? Right. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. I, and it, and it's, that's why I appreciate you is because of like the conversations we have, I'm always like, Hmm, interesting. I would have approached it differently. I wonder if I pair these or if I can somehow layer these, if the results will get better faster, you know, that's so right. Instead of six months, it'll take five months or four months. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I always think that these are super valuable, not only for like the people listening, but also for us because it's oh, sure. a, a different for set sure. of lenses. Like, like I, I had no clue. That's, that's what you were able to find appropriate stuff. The problem uh, associated associate with the shoulder. I had never yeah. even heard of that. Yeah. Completely now now it has me wonder, what should I have my patients do in the exam? Yeah. Maybe I can find but I have somehow done a little bit better. So it's always interesting, even for us. I mean, you're always learning stuff, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you guys would like to, to get a hold of us at all, if you're, you have questions or comments or, you know, whatever you can get a hold of us. Our email associated with the podcast is info at brainstormingwiththedocs.com. There is a absolute wealth of information on Dr. Glenn's website, which is drgharrison.com. Um, there is less wealth <laughs> of information on my website, but it's northlakeschiropractic.com. Um, or, you know, put a comment in the, in the below or, or in the comment section. We'll do our best to read those and get back to you on those as well. Um, and again, stay tuned because we're going to continue to roll out either new topics or case studies or something each and every week. And hopefully you guys find them interesting and applicable. And you never know when we might roll out something that's uh, that's good for you. That's right. So, yeah. I look forward to the next one. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I look forward well, to we'll the find next. something. <laughs> All, right, All right. We'll, we'll talk night. to you soon.